Welcome back guys. Today we're going to have a quick video on three important autoimmune inflammatory uh, diseases that attack muscle. And that is going to be, the three diseases are going to be dermatomyositis, polymyositis, and inclusion body myositis. And I have a couple of mnemonics to help distinguish these three in clinical setting and on the step one. So let's get right into this. We're going to start by looking at the general uh, structure of muscle. So here's a muscle cell, which is also called a muscle uh, fiber. And every single muscle cell is surrounded by something called an endomesium. Now, you can have a collection of muscle fibers that are all somewhat clustered together in little clustered segments. And then they can have a sheath as well that surrounds them. And this sheath is going to be called the paramecium. And this whole segment with the, all of these muscle fibers clustered together, surrounded by a paramecium, and each individual muscle fiber surrounded by an endomecium, this is all called a fascicle. And that's kind of the microscopic sections of muscle, and then it goes from there um, those, these, all of this, these fascicles can come together, forming, forming even bigger pieces to eventually form what you have as the gross anatomy of a muscle. So that's important to know to begin with. All right, so let's get into the very first one, dermatomyositis. I imagine you've already studied these diseases a little bit and you're maybe trying to find something to help you understand it a little bit better. And so here's some tips that I learned. So when you look at dermatome, I want you to think of dermatome. Dermatome. And remember from college biology that dermatome could just be like any segment of skin that is controlled. Say this is the uh, spinal cord in the back of this patient. And then this, this spinal cord sends out spinal nerves in between various at various levels of the spinal cord between the ver uh, vertebral segments. And, you know, obviously, you know, you have the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae. And spinal nerves from the spinal cord leave between these vertebrae. And then they control various, like, whole segments of skin at different parts of the body. So a dermatome is like a massive section of skin controlled by a certain spinal nerve. So that will help you remember dermatomyositis has lymphocyte, they will have lymphocyte, um, let's say clustering, or you could say you'll see it on a histology slide, lymphocyte clustering um, in the perifascicular area. And, you know, if you would try to do research and go on the internet and try to figure out, you'd see that you'd see perifascicular atrophy or perifascicular uh, lymphocyte like say gathering or clustering or grouping. Um, so now that I've explained the basic uh, structure of microscopic muscle, you can now understand where that is. So peri just means around, around the fascicle. So you could have various uh, lymphocytes gathering, you know, all around the actual fascicle. Now it's important to note, it's the lymphocytes will not go inside here in between there and won't go kind of around the muscle fibers, it's sticking to the outsides of the fascicles themselves. So that's how you can recognize this on a histology slide and that distinguishes this from the other two diseases that we're going to get to in a little bit. Also, when you look at dermatomyositis, it's, you can use dermatome again. You know that dermatome is involved, is involved with skin, just like a dermatologist is a doctor of skin. So dermatome, you need to be, that will help you remember that this one is the one that presents with Gautrin lesions. Gautrin lesions. And Gautrin lesions are if when you go and look at their knuckles, you'll see like a really thick, like a really thickened skin at their knuckles and at the different joints in their hands. You'll see that, especially on the, mainly on the knuckles. You can see it sometimes on the feet but uh, mainly on the knuckles is the way they'll describe it in a question. And that's called Gautrin lesions. And what will help you remember that this Gautrin lesions is involved with dermatomyositis is like I said, the dermato sounds like skin, dermatome for skin. So that's uh, presenting with Gautrin lesions. And the last important thing to know is how it presents as far as the pathology. So this is an autoimmune inflammatory disease that attacks skeletal muscle. 
And this specifically is, is, so the cause of this is vascular. So it's attacking the vascular supply of skeletal muscle. That's a distinguishing characteristic. The other two doesn't necessarily attack the, the small blood vessels that supply the skeletal muscle, but this one attacks. They have it. Uh, they think it's autoimmune basis that attacks the vascular supply of the skeletal muscle, and it specifically affects proximal. You'll see this in a patient. It'll be. Oops, sorry about that. It'll be proximal, symmetric. Proximal symmetric muscle weakness. Proximal symmetric. So let's. So we, what's the difference between proximal and distal? Well, proximal just means closer to the point of origin, which would let's say this would be the trunk in this case, the center. So proximal, it's going to affect these muscles, these muscles, all of these muscles, these muscles, these muscles, but will not affect the distal muscles. So they won't lose like their handwriting. Uh, they won't lose like the fine motor skills like involving their feet or their hands and stuff like that. That's not all affected here. What is affected is these areas, the proximal muscles. So they could set up a question that describes uh, uh, being affected, you know, the proximal muscles being affected, however they want to talk about whether the patient struggles to um, stand up from sitting, which requires a lot of strength here in the upper legs or whatever, however they describe it. So proximal symmetric muscle weakness. It's important to notice too symmetric because the last disease we're going to talk about is going to be asymmetric. Symmetric means that it's happening on, you'll see effect on both sides. Asymmetric means it's only going to affect one side of the body. So if you split the body in half, then it will, you know, in symmetric, it'll affect both sides of the body as it's uh, causing its problems in the pathology. So symmetric, well, you know, dermatomes are all over the body. The skin is everywhere, so it should be symmetric. So again, using that dermatome title to help you get to different uh, pieces of this, whether it be Gautrin lesions that are skin lesions on the knuckles, um, symmetric muscle weakness that's proximal, and then also lymphocyte clustering in the perifascicular space. The reason that you know it's perifascicular is because a fascicle is a collection of muscle fibers and just like a dermatome is a collection of an area of skin supplied uh, that like a, is a whole one unit just like a dermatome is and that'll help you remember that the lymphocytes are clustered in the perifascicular space kind of a the whole broad area not up in this areas in between individual muscle cells so now we move into polymyositis oh last thing i want to say Dermatomyositis has markers that you can recognize. Um, they, they could, a lot of times they won't give you too many details as far as the clinical manifestations, but they'll give you genetic or lab results that'll say that in dermatomyositis, they'll say that the patient has autoantibodies. They'll, they'll use this one a lot, anti-JO1. And that's, uh, that's an autoantibody that's diagnostic for dermatomyositis, anti-JO1. Okay, so poly, with polymyositis, you're going to see the same thing. You're going to see proximal muscle weakness, and it's going to be symmetric. So proximal, symmetric, muscle weakness, just like in dermatomyositis, but no skin manifestations. No skin manifestations. That should be easy to remember because dermatomyositis has Gautrin lesions. Well, because if you look at the word, it has the dermatome word in it. So that that's how you know that that's the only one of the three that has those the skin manifestations like that. Polymyositis doesn't have that, but it still has the proximal symmetric muscle weakness. Okay, when you look at polymyositis, look at the word poly and myositis. Poly means many. Poly means like a lot of something. So many myocytes. So now let's go back to our diagram over here. We said that each, that uh, the muscle fiber or a muscle cell, these are all clustered together, surrounded by the endomesium, and these are all clustered together into what's called a fascicle. And this fascicle has a sheet that's called the paramecium. 
And remember in dermatome myositis, you can pronounce it like that to help you remember, it's, it's basically having lymphocyte predominance clustering around the entire unit because a dermatome is a whole unit. But in polymyositis, it's telling you the area that's being affected, you could think about it this way, like the area that's going to have a lot of lymphocyte clustering is going to be around the many myocytes. So in this situation, all the myocytes are going to be around these areas. It's going to literally be endomesial lymphocyte clustering. So you'll see myocytes all in here, but you may, you're not going to see the myocytes outside in the pair around the perifascicular in the perifascicular area like in dermatomyositis. And when you look at the word, you should be able to kind of reason that through. So just little tips to help you remember, um, like ways to help you remember some of these diseases. And then, so that's the main distinguishing characteristics of uh, that one. And then the last one is going to be inclusion body myositis. Inclusion body myositis. Well, just look at the title. It's going to pretty much tell you. In inclusion body myositis, you're going to have inclusion bodies. You're going to have inclusion bodies in where the muscle is. So in the muscle cells, you're going to see inclusion bodies. So they'll pull, you know, they could give you a histological slide of a muscle fiber, and all of a sudden you see what's called ringed vacuoles. You'll see these little clusters. And it's interesting because they're called vacuoles, but they don't actually do the function that a normal vacuole would. They don't necessarily have a like a specific purpose of storing anything. What's inside these vacuoles, these are really just areas of broken down protein that's pretty much damaged and misfolded and whatnot. So what's what's in these rimmed, so let me write here, rimmed vacuoles. They could describe a situation of rimmed vacuoles. That's diagnostic for inclusion body myositis. There's, I think, one other really rare disease, but you'll kind of know by the way they set up the question that we're talking about one of these three autoimmune inflammatory muscular diseases. So the rim vacuoles are filled with tau protein, and specifically it's phosphorylated taus. Let me remind you that tau protein when you have it hyperphosphorylated, like, like in this situation, it's what forms the tangles. You ever heard neurofibrillary tangles that's present in um, Alzheimer's disease? That's from the, the hyperphosphorylated tau. And the other thing that can be inside, so this is the first thing that can be inside the rim vacuoles. The other thing that's going to be inside is going to be this beta amyloid. And specifically, it's beta amyloid. Beta amyloid is a, like a broken down, like misfolded piece that comes from the um, A beta uh, precursor, the AB. So the A beta, the beta amyloid precursor protein. And when, when this beta amyloid is all misfolded, and it's too much of that, and it will begin to react with each other, and you'll have amyloid plaques. Okay? So the tau causes the tangles. Tau, T for tangles, right? T for tangles. And then the beta amyloid causes the plaques. And both of these are present in um, Alzheimer's disease. So they're thinking that this particular disease of the three could have some other characteristic outside of the realm of an auto-inflammatory disease. But uh, right now it's, it's categorized with these other three. Where this one differs, where this one differs the most is going to be in the area of the pro the muscle weakness. It's not proximal in this case, it's going to be distal. Distal, asymmetric, both things are different in this case. Distal, asymmetric, muscle weakness. So that means that it's going to be on the same, it's going to be all of the areas now distal from the trunk. All the muscles can be affected that's kind of far away from the center of the body. So we're now we're gonna lose like handwriting skills. The patient is losing issues like holding, let's say a baseball bat because he's lost function in his hands where he can't grip the baseball bat or he can't, his handwriting is going like really bad all of a sudden. 
and he's losing function in his ankles, like a lot of the muscles in his feet. So he has trouble putting his shoes on because his feet, he can't move them a certain way. So that's distal muscle weakness, but it's going to be asymmetric. So I drew it here as it can affect any of these areas, but it's not going to be symmetric. It's going to be only affecting one side of the body. That's inclusion body myositis. So I hope this, uh, some of these tips helped clear up some of these points. I'm sure you've heard all, all of these um, symptoms in these diseases before when you were learning about these, but I hope some of these tips helps to clear it up. For me, learning this and going back over the structure of muscle really helps clear up with the what it's talking about when it says perifascicular atrophy or what it's talking about when it says you know lymphocyte clustering around the endomesium so all of that stuff i was kind of confused but now that you know the structure of muscle it should make more sense and then also dermatomyositis has the word dermatome that should link that should help you remember all the little tricks i gone over that should tell you that you know this is the one with the gotrin lesions and that this is going to be the one with the cl the lymphocyte clustering around the whole cluster of the myocytes called a fascicle because a dermatome is a cluster of skin that's affected by a certain uh, spinal nerve coming from the spinal cord. And then when you go into polymyositis, I said that polymyositis stands for many myocytes. And you know that in this situation, it's telling you that the lymphocyte clustering is going to happen around all, so we go back to our picture over here, all of the inside around the specific myocytes that make up a fascicle. So in that disease, you're not going to see it on the outside around the whole cluster. It's going to be all in between the different uh, myocytes near the endomesium, which covers it, and endo for inside. So that's how you can remember that. And in that case, it doesn't have any cutaneous symptoms. So I wrote it right here, no skin manifestations. That's also easy to remember because dermatome is in the one above it. And we went over dermatome myositis. And the last one, inclusion body myositis, we said it has it's characteristic of rimmed vacuoles, and they're not really vacuoles. They're formed because of this phosphorylated tau forming tangles and this beta amyloid forming plaques, and that's clustered inside from the proteolysis that's happening in this disease, and you're having distal asymmetric muscle weakness. That's, the, uh, that's another very important distinguishing part uh, that separates it from the other three. So I hope this helped, and I will see you in another video. See you guys.